Hey, good morning. The topics that will be discussed today are estimation and sampling techniques. First, estimation. It refers to the process by which one makes inferences about a population based on the information obtained from the sample. Point estimate versus interval estimate. Statisticians use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. For example, sample means are used to estimate population means, sample proportions to estimate population proportions. So an estimate of a population parameter may be expressed in two ways, the point estimate and the interval estimate. The point estimate of a population parameter is a single value of a statistic. For example, the sample mean x bar is a point estimate of the population mean mu. Similarly, the sample proportion p bar is a point estimate of the population proportion p. This p bar can also be expressed as p hat. For the interval estimate, an interval estimate is defined by two numbers between which a population parameter is said to lie. For example, A is less than X bar is less than B is an interval estimate of the population mean mu. So this indicates or it indicates that the population mean is greater than A but less than B. For the confidence intervals, statisticians use a confidence interval to express the precision and uncertainty associated with a particular sampling method. A confidence interval consists of three parts, the confidence level, statistic, and margin of error. The confidence level describes the uncertainty of a sampling method. The statistic and margin of error define an interval estimate that describes the precision of the method. The interval estimate of a confidence interval is defined by the sample statistic plus minus the margin of error. For example, Suppose we compute an interval estimate of a population parameter. We might describe this interval estimate as a 95% confidence interval. This means that if we used the same sampling method to select different samples and compute different interval estimates, the true population parameter would fall within a range defined by the sample statistic plus minus margin of error 95% of the time. The confidence intervals are preferred to point estimates because confidence interval indicate the precision of the estimate and the uncertainty of the estimate. Okay, so estimating mu with large samples. The reliability of an estimate will be measured by the confidence level C. ZC is the critical value for a confidence level of C. So we have here the confidence level C and its corresponding critical value ZC. Anyways, you can see this at the student's T distribution. distribution table okay in the infinity row okay so we have there at 0.75 the critical value is 1.15 8 or uh, 80% or 0.80 we have 1.80 uh, 1.28 85% level of confidence or 0.85 we have 1.44 0.90 we have 1.645, 0.95, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.85, 0.
we have 1.96, 0 0.98, we have 2.33, 0 0.99, we have 2.58. For the error of estimate, E is the maximal error tolerance on the error of estimate for a given confidence level C. We have there E is equal to ZC times S over square root of N. For the C confidence interval for mu, we have there X bar minus E is less than mu is less than X bar plus E. This is the critical value of Z. This is our standard deviation. And this is the sample size. Example, Julia enjoys jogging. She has been jogging over a period of several years, during which time her physical condition has remained constantly good. Usually, she jogs two miles per day. During the past year, Julia has sometimes recorded her times required to run two miles. She has a sample of 90 of these times. For these 90 times, the mean was 15.60 minutes and the standard deviation was 1.8. Find a 0 0.95 confidence interval for mu. Okay, so we have here our mean of 15.60 minutes and standard deviation of 1.8. Okay? So our n or sample is 90. Okay, we need to compute for a 95% confidence interval for mu. Okay? So first is let us compute for our e. e is equal to zc times s over square root of n. So we have here our zc at 0.95 is we have 1.96. So we have there 1.96 times our standard deviation of 1.8 divided by the square root of 90. So our E is equal to, we have 1.96 times 1.8 divided by the square root of 90. We have there 0 0.37. Okay, so for our mean, we have there, for our confidence interval, we have 15.6 minus our E of 0 0.37 is less than mu is less than 15.6 plus 0 0.37. So we have there. We have 15.23 is less than, mu is less than 15.97. So this is our 0.95 or 95% confidence interval for the mean. Next, another example. A large loan company specializes in making automobile loans for used cars. The board of directors wants to estimate the average amount loaned for cars during the past year. The company takes a random sample of 225 customer files for this period. The mean amount loaned for the sample of 225 loans is $8,200. And the standard deviation is $750. So find a 0 0.95 confidence interval for the mean. Again, we have here our mean is 225. For the 225 loans is $8,200. And our standard deviation is $750. Our sample size or sample or, or, or our sample is 225 loans. So we have here our E is equal to ZC times S over square root of N. We have there our ZC is 1.96 times our S is 750 divided by the square root of 225. 
So our E is equal to We have there 98, okay? So for our interval, we have there 8,200 minus 98 is less than mu is less than 8,200 plus 98. So this one is 8,102 is less than mu is less than 8,298. So this is our 95% confidence interval for the mean. For estimating mu with small samples, okay, so how do we determine if our mu, if our sample size is small or large? So if n is less than or equal to 30, so it is considered as a small sample, okay? Then, for the degrees of freedom, okay, we have here degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1, okay? So this is for your reference in looking for your... TC at the student's T distribution. Table. Okay. So. For our example, a company has a new process for manufacturing large artificial sapphires. The production of each gem is expensive. So, the number available for examination is limited. In a trial run, 12 sapphires are produced. The mean weight for these 12 gems is 6.75 carats and the sample standard deviation is 0 0.33 carats. Find a 95% confidence interval for the mean. Okay, so for this one, we have here our E is equal to. Instead of using ZC, we will be using TC. Okay, again, remember, please remember, we have a certain degree of freedom here. We have TC times S over square root of N. Okay, so for this one, we have the mean for these 12 gems is 6.75. Our N is 12. Our standard deviation is 0 0.33. Okay, so for the TC, we have there our N is 12. So for the degrees of freedom, we have there N minus 1. We have the 12 minus 1 is equal to 11. Okay? So, let us find our TC using 11. Okay? So, at the student C distribution table, we have there 11 is 2.201. Okay? So, our TC is 2.201. Okay? Again, this is from the student's T distribution table. Okay? So, we have there 2.201 times our S is 0 0.33 divided by the square root of N is 12. Okay? So, for our E, we have there... Okay, 0 0.21. Okay. So, for our interval, we have our mean is 6.75 minus 0 0.21 is less than mu is less than 6.75 plus 0 0.21. Okay. So, for our lower interval, we have... 6.54 is less than mu is less than 6.96. Okay, so this is our, again, 95% confidence interval for the mean. Okay, so for estimating P in binomial distribution... The binomial distribution is completely determined by the number of trials n and the probability p 
of success in a single trial. For most experiments, the number of trials is chosen in advance, then the distribution is completely determined by P. For the point estimate for P, we have there P hat, okay, that is equal to R over N, that's R success out of N trials, and of course Q hat is equal to 1 minus P hat, and is computed by the, using this formula, E is equal to ZZ times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. Okay? So for our example, a random sample of 188 books purchased showed that 66 of the books were murder mysteries. So what is the point estimate for P? And find a 90% confidence interval for P. So we have here, what is the point estimate for P? That is, the P hat is equal to R over N, which is equal to, we have 66 divided by 188. And this is equal to 0 0.35. Okay? So if Okay, find a 90% confidence interval for P. Okay, we need, we have our P hat is equal to 0 0.35. So our Q hat is equal to 1 minus P hat, that is 1 minus 0 0.35, that is equal to 0 0.65. Okay, so for this one, our E is equal to ZC times the square root of P hat Q hat over n which is equal to our zc is at 90 percent that is 1.645 times the square root of we have our p hat is 0.35 times q hat is 0.65 divided by our n is 188 so our e is equal to 0 0.06 okay so again our p hat is 0 0.35 minus 0 0.06 is less than p is less than 0 0.35 plus 0 0.06 so we have there Zero point twenty nine is less than p is less than 0 0.41 so this is our again 90 percent confidence interval for p okay so for our additional examples Fugitive Task Force runs 99 photos in Colorado Springs newspaper. Police make 17 arrests. This was a headline in the Rocky Mountain News, January 11, 1994. So find an 85% confidence interval. Okay, so again, let us compute for P hat, which is equal to 17 divided by 99. That is 0 0.17. So if P hat is 0 0.17, our Q hat is equal to 1 minus P hat. That is equal to 1 minus 0 0.17. We have 0 0.83. So we compute for E. That is our ZC for 85% is 1.44 times the square root of we have 0 0.17 times 0 0.83 over our n is 99 so our e is equal to 0 0.5 okay we have there 0 0.05 okay so our lower interval, 0 0.17 minus 0 0.05 is less than P is less than 0 0.17 plus 0 0.05. We have here 0 
is less than P is less than 0 0.22. So this is our 85% confidence interval for P. Okay, so another example. The number of pups in wolf dens in the southwestern United States is recorded below for 20 wolf dens. Again, we have 20. Is it 20? 1, 2, th one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, what we need is to compute for 95% confidence interval for the population mean of wolf, po uh, wolf pups per den in the southwestern United States. Okay? So, we are not given the mean and the standard deviation. So, we still need to compute for that. We have here, okay, this 20, this is small sample. Okay? So, for our x bar and sigma, okay, so let us compute for that. We have 5, 6, 8, 5, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 7, 4, 9, 3, 4, 9, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 5. Okay? Our mean is 5.6 and our standard deviation is we have 1.9 okay so let us compute for our e that is equal to 95 percent of 20 20 minus 1 for the degrees of freedom we have 20 minus 1 we have there 19 okay 19 at 95 percent we have 2.093 2.093 times our s is 1.9 divided by square root of 20. Okay, so our E is we have 2.093 times 1.9 over square root of 20. We have there 0 0.89. 0 0.89. So we have here 5.6 minus 0 0.89 is less than mu is less than 5.6 plus 0 0.89. Okay. We have there 5.6 minus 0.89. We have 4.71. Is less than u is less than 5.6 plus 0 0.89. We have 6.49. This is our 95% confidence interval for the mean. Okay, so another one. The US, the U.S. Department of the Interior is checking cattle on the Wingate Open Range in Montana. A random sample of 900 cattle cows shows that 54 are malnourished. Find a 99% confidence interval. Okay, so here we are, or we need to compute for the confidence interval for P. So we have there... Our uh, p hat is equal to 54 over 99, uh, 900. Okay, so we have 54 divided by 900 is 0 0.06. So our q hat is equal to 0 0.94. So for our e, we have 99% is 2.56. Or 2.5, uh, 2.56, no, no 2.58 or 2.576, okay, times the square root of, we have 0 0.06 times 0 0.94 divided by our N is 900. So, our E is equal to, we have 2.58 times the square root of 0 0.06 times 0 0.94 over 900. We have there 0 0.02. Okay, so our p hat is 0 0.06 minus our e of 0 0.02 is less than p is less than 
0 0.06 plus 0 0.02. We have there 0 0.04 is less than P is less than 0 0.08. Okay, so this is our 99% confidence interval for P. Okay, so next is estimating the difference between two population means. For the point estimation of mu1 minus mu2, that is for large samples, we will be, uh, this is our confidence interval. We have x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e is less than mu1 minus mu2 is less than x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. And we'll be using this formula for our e that is equal to jc times the square root of variance 1 over n1 plus variance 2 over n2. Okay, so for our example, the average scores in NAT of two sections of nursing students were compared. The data is presented below. Estimate the difference in mean scores using 99% confidence interval. Okay, so you are given the mean, the variance, and the n for the two sections. Okay, so first is let us get the difference between the mean of section 1 and section 2. We have there x bar 1 minus x bar 2 that is equal to 86 minus 83 we have 3. Okay, then let us compute for our e. A is equal to Zc times the square root of variance 1 over n1 plus variance 2 over n2. And that is equal to, we have 2.58 times the square root of, we have variance 1 is 8.2 over 100 plus variance 2 is 7.3 over 100. Okay? So, what is our E? We have the Two over one hundred. Okay, so we have there one point zero two. Okay, so our difference, our difference from the two means that is three minus one point zero two. Our e is less than mu one minus mu two is less than three plus one point zero two. This is we have. 1.98 is less than mu1 minus mu2 is less than 4.02. So this is our confidence, 99% confidence interval for the means. Okay, so for the point estimation of mu1 minus mu2 for small samples, we have there again the difference between the means x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus e. Okay, so here the difference is the formula for computing for the s is equal to the square root of n1 minus 1 times variance 1 plus n2 minus 1 times variance 2 over n1 plus n2 minus 2. Our e is equal to tcs times the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. Okay, so for our example... We have here two groups, okay? Compute for the 90% confidence interval. Okay, so we need what? Our mean and standard deviation and N for group 1 and also for group 2. So we have there X bar 1, S1, N1, X bar 2, S2, and N2. Okay, for group 1, we have 16, 20.1, 19.6, 22.3, 19.9, 18.8, 20.9, 19.1, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.9, 20.
and 20.6 okay so first we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay our n1 is 15 okay so what is our mean and standard deviation so for the mean we have there 19.63 and our standard deviation is we have 1.86 okay so for group 2, okay, so let us again get the mean. We have, okay, we have there 8 8.2, 10.2, 5.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.8, 8.8, 6.5, 5.4, 4.7, 8.3, 5.9, 5.4, 2.9, 7.6. Okay? So we have there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14. Okay? So for the mean, we have 6.61. And for the standard deviation, we have there 1.89. Okay? Okay, so let us compute for our S. Our S is equal to the square root of, we have our N1 is 15 minus 1 times our S1 is 1.86 squared plus N2 is 14 minus 1 times our S2 squared is 1.89 squared divided by n1 is 15 plus n2 is 14 minus 2. By the way, for this one, I'm looking for the tabular value. Okay, we will be using degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 since we have two groups. Okay, so for our s that is equal to let us compute for that we have We have 1.87. Okay. 1.88 since it's 1.8745. Okay. Then our E is equal to TCS times the square root of 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. Okay. So we have here our TC. Okay, given the degrees of freedom is equal to 15 plus 14 minus 2, and that is 27. Okay, that is 15 plus 14 minus 2, 27 is at, we need the 90% 90 okay, confidence interval, we have 1.703, 1.703. So we have here 1.703 times 1.88 times the square root of, we have 1 over 15 plus 1 over 14.
Okay, so we have there E is 1.19 or 1.1897, 1.19. Okay, so for this one, our the difference between our uh, two means is we have x bar 1 minus x bar 2 and that is 19.63 minus 6.61 x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is equal to 13 .02. So 13.02 minus 1.19 is less than mu1 minus mu2 is less than 13.02 plus 1.19. Okay. So we have for our lower interval 11.83 is less than mu1 minus mu2 is less than 14.21 so this is our 90% confidence interval for the means okay so we have here the point estimation of P1 minus P2 for large samples we have there the difference between two Point estimates P hat plus minus E. And then E is equal to ZC times the square root of P hat 1 Q hat 1 over N1 plus P hat 2 Q hat 2 over N2. Okay? So, for our example, the book survey responses an education of their validity by E.J. Wentland and K. Smith includes studies reporting accuracy of answers Two questions from surveys. A study by Lockander et al. considered the question, Are you a registered voter? Accuracy of response was confirmed by a check of city voting records. Two methods of survey were used, a face-to-face -face interview and a telephone interview. A random sample of 93 people was asked the same questions during the telephone interview 84 respondents gave accurate answers another random sample of 83 people was asked the voter registration question face to face 69 respondents respondents gave accurate answers find a 95 percent confidence interval for p1 minus p2 okay so we have there oh Okay, so let us put our computation here. We have our p hat 1 is equal to 84 over 93. So our q hat 1 is equal to, okay, what is 84 over 93? p hat 1 is equal to, We have 0 0.90, so this is, Q hat 1 is 0 0.1, P hat 2 is equal to, we have 69 over 83, and that is equal to, okay, 0 0.83, okay, so our Q hat 2 is equal to, we have 0 0.17 okay so let us compute for our p hat 1 minus p hat 2 that is 0 0.9 minus 0 0.83 we have 0 0.07 okay so our e is equal to our zc at 95 percent is 1.96 times the square root of we have 0.9 times 0.1 over 93 plus 
we have 0.83 times 0.17 over 83. So our E is equal to 93, okay, plus 93. Okay, we have there. Uh -huh. We have there zero point one. Okay, zero point one. So, for our interval, we have there 0 0.07. Okay, minus 0 0.1 is less than P1 minus P2 is less than 0 0.07 plus 0 0.1. Okay, so we have here 0 0.07 is 0.1. That is negative 0 0.03 and we have no negative probability. So, let's just... Uh, let this be 0 is less than P1 minus P2 is less than 1 point or no this is 0 0.07 plus 0 0.1 we have there 0 0.17 okay so this is our 95% confidence interval for P1 minus P2 okay so next is our sampling techniques. So first is the most common, commonly used formula, Slovin's formula. This is our method, the Slovin's formula. We have there n is equal to our population divided by 1 plus n e squared. So let us say our n is 5,000 and our e is set as 0 0.05. What is our sample size? So we have there... 5,000 over 1 plus 5,000 times 0 0.05 squared, that is 370.37. So if it's uh, discrete, this will be 371, okay? So if it's continuous, then this would be 370.37, okay? Next is sample size for estimating mu. We have there n is equal to z sigma over e squared. So for our example problem, a wide left study is designed to find the mean weight of salmon caught by an Alaskan fishing company. As a preliminary study, a random sample of 50 freshly caught salmon is weight. The sam sample standard deviation is 2.15 pounds. How large a sample should be taken to be 99% confident that the sample mean is within 0 0.2 pound of the true mean weight? So for this one, okay, so our N is equal to, what is our ZC? At 99%, that is 2.58 times our standard deviation of 2.15 pounds divided by our e of 0 0.2 pound okay so squared so what is our sample size so we have there 2.58 times 2.58 times 2.15 over 0.2 okay we have there 769.23 pounds. So this is our sample size. Then next is we have there the sample size for uh, estimating P hat. Okay. So you have there N is equal to 1 4 times AC over E squared. So this is 4 if there is no preliminary estimate. Okay, so for our example problem, a company is in business of selling wholesale popcorn to grocery stores. The company buys directly from farmers. 
a buyer for the company is examining a large amount of corn from a certain farmer. Before the purchase is made, the buyer wants to estimate P, the probability that the kernel will pop. So the buyer wants to be 95% sure that the point estimate for P will be in order either way by less than 0 0.01. Okay, so for this one, we have their N is equal to 1 fourth times our ZZ is 1.96, that is 95% over E is 0 0.01, okay? squared so what is our sample size we have there we have one four times 1.96 over 0 0.01 squared okay so we have there 9604 okay so what if we have already a preliminary estimate of let us say um 90%. Okay, so we are, we are on our preliminary estimate, we are 90% sure that the point is uh, that the kernels or the kernels from that farm will pop. Okay, so let's say our preliminary estimate is 0 0.9. Okay, so if we have a preliminary estimate, the, the formula that we'll be using is n is equal to p times 1 minus p, which is q times zz over e squared okay so we have here n okay our given preliminary estimate is 90 percent so we have there 0.9 times 1 minus p or q is 0.1 times our zz of 1.96 over 0 0.01 squared so our sample size is We have 1.96 over 0.01 squared. Okay, so we only need 3,457.44. Okay, so that is our sample size. Okay, so that's it. Keep safe and healthy.